Nicole Scott here for Netbook News and I'm down here at the Shanghai Shack Memorial Hall. I'm on my way to the Gonghua Computer Market because this week's Netbook Nation is about Windows 7. Uh, now in 2001 XP was released and for two long years we were plagued with Trojans and Worms and Microsoft finally did one of the most spectacular things, they released Service Pack 2. And in one update we went from Swiss cheese to security. We then entered the promised land of Vista, and of course we all know how that turned out. Vista was widely considered to be one of Microsoft's greatest failures. But despite that, it did lay the groundwork for a host of new technologies, and its modern driver architecture was designed to move the core functionality from the kernel into the user space, which is an absolutely necessary development. So as 2009 draws to an end, we're faced with the reality that Microsoft has released yet another operating system, Windows 7. Now based on the already mature technology available in Vista, Windows 7 should be everything that Vista is not. Now if you've already gone out and purchased this wonderful OS, I have a few tips and tricks for you on how to get the most out of it. Now the first thing that you should be doing after you install Windows 7 on your PC is running clear type text. Windows 7 includes a built-in wizard that runs you through the entire process pain-free. To launch clear type text tuning by typing CTTUNE -T 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 -E, into the start menu search field and open the search results. They'll go through a brief series of steps that ask you to identify the best looking text rendering method. So as I inch my way closer and closer to the computer market, I'm going to turn to Sasha now, who's going to introduce you to some of the netbooks that we found at the Windows 7 launch here in Taipei. Sasha here for NetbookNews.com. We are in Taipei at the Windows 7 launch event and uh, we just have a new whole bunch of Windows 7 netbooks and small laptops or small notebooks. That's what uh, Microsoft calls them over here. But let's start over here with the Acer Ferrari One, something that we already saw on our website about two months ago. So it's an 11.6 inch version uh, with an AMD Athlon MB40. And um, yeah, pretty, pretty neat design for all these fans of the Scuderia Ferrari. You can see this little sign, the Ravalino Campante. Oh, Cavallino Rampante, sorry for the Italian guys, you know. And uh, you see it comes with this Ferrari design and um, yeah, pretty light. I think it has a six cell battery. Um, doesn't sport such a long battery life uh, that we saw on the Intel uh, Atom systems. But yeah, I like the build quality. Very, very decent keyboard. Okay. Fancy shaped trackpad, single mouse buttons. The Acer Ferrari one should be in the shops now pretty soon. Let's see what else is here. We have over here an MTech LA10. This is something that I've never seen before. Reminds me a little bit of the first generation of the Acer Aspire 1. You can see the small um, trackpad over here with the mouse buttons on the left and on the right side. Kind of small keyboard, super small right shift key. And yeah, 10.1 inch system, Intel Atom N270, 160 gigabyte of hard disk drive. All these devices over here are pretty much with Windows 7 Starter Edition. Now more than ever, we actually need to, to invest in the kinds of innovation that are going to power productivity growth and innovation growth that can help get the world's economies moving again. I do think there's a lot of enthusiasm uh, that we've seen so far. Got to actually get the product out. And I'm glad to hear from early users, but you know, the consumer market will start digesting the product on October 22nd. And uh, I think that certainly the buzz and the momentum is likely to switch quite quickly to Windows 7. So that was Steve Ballmer at the Windows 7 press event in Munich a few weeks ago. Now we all know that netbooks are most commonly used with a second monitor. Now the window P shortcut key is definitely going to help you manage your multiple monitors. It opens up a small overlay that lets you configure a second display or projector. If you're using more than one monitor, remembering window shift left and window shift right will more easily move the open window from one screen to another. The window retains its size and relative location on the new screen, which is helpful when you're dealing with multiple documents. Now why don't we get back to the Windows 7 launch event in Munich to hear about how early adopters are using the XP virtual mode. So um, because we have already a lot of applications running for several years, BW is not uh, just a new company, a whole company. We're using and uh, utilizing the 16 mode, virtual XP mode uh, very often. 
Um, first experience is just great because in former times we had to adapt and uh, invest a lot of money in old programs looking for the right guys to understand the whole structure to re-adapt programs. Now, it is also a part of productivity. We can just run this product in a safe environment. We call it sandbox sometimes. Uh, it works. It's just great. At Jung Sao Sing Sen Station. This is a street that is just full of computer stores, as you can see here behind me. Um, it's Sunday night and it's still full of people who want to go shopping for computers. Now, this definitely isn't somewhere that you want to go if you want to save time. That's for sure. So now, one of my favorite time-saving uh, shortcuts on Windows is Alt Tab. As you can see, you can cycle through a bunch of open programs this way. But there's another way to see what's going on. Windows T cycles through your open programs via taskbar peak menu. So as you can see here, the Gonghua computer market is pasted in Windows 7 in all of its glory. Um, now, getting back to the Windows 7 launch event in Munich, uh, Demir from Ax Axonom actually discussed about Windows 7 on netbooks. And then after that, we're going to finish off the netbooks that Sasha uncovered here at the Windows 7 launch in Taipei. We have a tough times. Many companies have difficulties to invest, so they buy things like netbooks, cheap hardware, and they mostly run today on XP. So the question is always, does Windows 7 run on netbooks? And every user who tries that, he will switch to Windows 7. And that, that, that's the main issue. You have to try, to, you have to see it and see that all of goodness from XP is there, but much more. And we have an HG Mini 110 Oh, so please help me, guys. You can, you can leave a comment. I can't remember the name of this designer anymore. Tor, Zunström, whatever. It's a kind of special version, a kind of fashion netbook. You can see this nice uh, structural design on the lid. It's kind of three-dimensional. So I saw this one for the first time during IDF in uh, San Francisco. Besides that, it's pretty much an HD Mini 110, means Intel Atom, N270. This version should come, in my opinion, um, let's take a look at the back. I think, yeah, that's a three cell battery version. So um, you should e expect, um, say, a battery life of only some three and a half hours. Kind of interesting that it says on the bottom, Windows XP Home Edition UHC PC. So I think they really had a little installation party last night over here. Another kind of handy tip or trick for Windows 7 is that uh, there's a wizard for calibrating your video and color display. So search and launch DCCW from the start menu. It'll run you through a series of pages where you can adjust the gamma, brightness, contrast and color of the screen to make images look their best. And now that we've arrived inside the computer market, why don't we take a look at Sasha's last device from the Windows 7 launch event in Taipei. Now it is a net top. That's the eBox EB1501. I really, really like this device. Intel Atom 330, that's a dual core Atom uh, for desktop and laptops. So offers you two, two Intel Atom 230 cores in one package. Each is 1.6 gigahertz and also comes with NVIDIA iron. So this really, really offers you some decent performance. I've been seeing the first hands-on videos while they were doing 1080p on it with 15% of CPU load. So this could really be something that can stand in your living room as a home theater PC. And uh, yeah, really, really cool device. As you can see, full HD, 1080, compatible. And as soon as it's getting it on the market, pretty much like now. I've been searching for Windows 7 netbooks in here, and the reality is, is that everyone's selling them with XP. And you have the option to upgrade to Windows 7 if you pay for it. It's kind of anticlimactic, but so far Windows 7 is just for sale here. It's not really, you know, something that we're seeing a lot of new Windows 7 devices. Okay, but my last tip and trick for you for Windows 7, the operating system, is that you should reveal your hidden memory card slots. Open up my computer, press Alt to show the toolbar at the top of the screen, and go to Folder Options under Tools. Hit the View tab and uncheck Hide Empty Drives in the Computer Folder. 
you guys have enjoyed my little tour of Taipei getting here to the computer market. If you want to come and see the rest of the uh, Gonghua computer market, you're going to have to wait for a show that we're going to be doing soon on it because really, it's five floors of awesome and I need to dedicate several days to doing this. So, this has been Nicole Scott for Netbook News and this has been my look at Windows 7 and a few tips and tricks for you.